So uh, now we're uh, on the roof of any one and uh, on the roof it's a really uh, a good uh, way to again to uh, really get an understanding of, uh, of what type of uh, systems we uh, run in the building. Uh, so uh, going to the roof is uh, it's very helpful. What we're going to do here is uh, uh, first of all we are going to look at each equipment and uh, try to get as much information as we can from the name tags that uh, that are on the, on the equipment. And again, also have understanding of, uh, of how uh, our equipment uh, is, uh, or equipment layout and how uh, uh, each uh, system serve what part of the building. Uh, of course, uh, if we have access to mechanical joints, uh, we can get a lot of information on the joints, but it's always uh, good to uh, see what happens in the, in the past few years if uh, things change and uh, uh, more units are added or are replaced and some some of the ducting configuration may change so uh, going onto the roof and see uh, what's there is always a good thing. Uh, sometimes you go on the roof and you see equipment that you're not going to be able to uh, get much information from it. For example, uh, we can see uh, mushroom exhaust fans that uh, you're not necessarily going to be able to see what the motor is uh, that uh, running that uh, mushroom exhaust, but uh, at least you'd uh, be able to know it's there and maybe look in documents to see what uh, uh, what is uh, the CFM of the of the exhaust fan and what uh, the horsepower of the motor, for example. Another thing that uh, I uh, personally like doing is. Uh, uh, is spend a little time on the roof and uh, maybe uh, take a piece of paper and, and draw uh, on that piece of paper the roof layout and, and put all that equipment on that uh, piece of paper so I can go back to the office and I have it in front of me. I, uh, I remember that it was there and I have pictures to compare it uh, with the layout on the paper and kind of uh, I really understand what's going on. So uh, let's go and see all the, all the equipment that we see here. Uh, we'll, t we'll look at condensing units. These condensing units are usually serve, uh, 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 server rooms or, or any types of rooms that need uh, additional uh, cooling capacity that is uh, supplementary cooling uh, other than the main cooling system that we'll see uh, in a little bit. Um, we're also going to see, uh, as I mentioned, uh, some exhaust fans. We'll, we'll, we'll number them. We'll, uh, we'll try to see if we can hear if they're running, if they're cycling, uh, give us an idea of uh, how they're controlled. Uh, we're going to look at the rooftop units. We can see, I can see from here that, uh, that uh, uh, the east side of that building is, uh, is, uh, has uh, quite a bit of uh, a number of, um, of rooftop units. These are package rooftop units. I can tell that they have uh, cooling uh, and they're probably gas fired uh, rooftop unit so what we'll do is we'll go there we'll listen to how they operate we'll take notes uh, we look at the name tags and uh, and we'll make sure that we uh, uh, when we have information on all of these units so remember we want to make sure that we uh, capture all the exhaust fans on the roof because if exhaust exhaust fans are left on during the night when everybody is, uh, when the building is unoccupied, we uh, remove a lot of uh, uh, warm air from the building and that's a big waste. So first of all, we want to make sure that we know all the exhaust fan on, in uh, serving our building. And we also want to make sure that they're not running after hours. And uh, you know, if you can't do a night audit, uh, you can only do a day audit. You, you, you kind of want to make sure that it's running during the day and then make sure that uh, there's some kind of a control to that fan that will shut it off at night. Um, in this case, it's, uh, it's not a very typical case, but in this case, we have a tag on the mushroom that uh, tells us uh, uh, what that uh, fan, ser fan serves. Uh, this uh, happens to serve room 340 and it has a uh, one horsepower fan. So it's good information that uh, you will need for your end use breakdown. And uh, uh, another information that you might want to look at is CFM if you uh, realize that that fan is uh, left on during nighttime, because that would uh, be uh, very easy to justify uh, to control it better. Here, this is a, a, a cooling tower that serves at uh, our cooling chiller in this building. Um, we can see that uh, uh, you can see the round shape of the top of this cooling tower. That indicates uh, 
uh, an induced draft cooling tower and you can also see the motor that runs that uh, fan um, and you can easily take a uh, look at the name, pla name tag and see what uh, how many horsepower that motor is so I look at air and it's a 20 horsepower motor so that what uh, drive uh, this uh, induced draft cooling tower hopefully we'll have a variable C drive that will control that uh, motor well, we go down and see what's behind that cooling tower So as I was uh, hoping to see, uh, here's the variable speed drive that controls that uh, uh, the, the fan, the fan, the motor of the cooling tower fan and modulate the speed of that fan as uh, cooling load uh, increase, we increase the speed of the fan to reject more of that heat to the cooling tower. Starting from the first uh, rooftop unit, we, uh, we're going to look at uh, every unit because uh, every unit might be different and might be different from the original design. So again, if you have uh, access to a mechanical joint, it may or may not be the unit that uh, you end up seeing on the roof. So if you look at this rooftop unit, for example, again, this is a, a packaged rooftop unit. Uh, it has a, a cooling system, uh, uh, so it has the compressors in it. It has uh, the condensing, the condenser side, and the evaporator, which is uh, past the fan, uh, which is inside that uh, package unit. This example of York uh, rooftop unit is actually all electric. So uh, out of uh, the re all the rest of our uh, rooftop units that we see here, this is the electric one, and uh, heating is also done electrically. Uh, when we look at when we do the inventory, we're gonna look around the unit to find where that uh, name tag is, where we're going to take all the information that we need, uh, like uh, the, the horsepower of the fan, of the blower, the, the horsepower of the, of the condenser fan, which is the outdoor fan that is located on top of the unit, and we look for the compressor size and the capacity of each compressor. One, one uh, part of this uh, label, or one part of our uh, equation is missing there, and. Uh, uh, that's the CFM of, of this unit. Uh, most cases you're not going to find the CFM on the name tag uh, and you will either have to find it in the balancing report or in a, or search the model number of that unit and, uh, and get uh, the CFM from there. And uh, obviously that's a very important uh, 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 variable in our, uh, in our equation as, as when we do our uh, our uh, uh, ventilation load calculation we have to have uh, some kind of an idea of what how much air is uh, provided from that unit so that's uh, that's one thing and uh, the second thing is uh, you might want to look at this uh, specific unit is that you'll see that uh, uh, we have some kind of a, a closed damper here and and uh, two more intakes on this side and uh, what th that tells us that this unit has a uh, an economizer in it and basically when uh, when when uh, when you need cooling in your building uh, this unit knows that uh, I can take uh, advantage of cold air from the outside and bring in more of the cold air more than the minimum requirement and uh, at this point you bring a lot of uh, extra air and that air will need to be relieved somehow and this is the, the relief damper that will basically open up to let go of some of that uh, pressure build up as you bring more air into the building. Here we have another rooftop unit, uh, uh, very similar to uh, the York unit. This is the Aeon uh, rooftop unit. Again, it's a packaged unit. It has uh, cooling and heating. And uh, you can tell right away by the uh, yellow pipe that this is a gas-fired uh, uh, unit. And you can see that this uh, uh, the exhaust for, uh, for the uh, uh, combustion gases um, from, the, from the burner inside that unit. Uh, so similar idea. Uh, we're also going to look at uh, the name tag of that, uh, that unit and pick up all the information required and needed for our audit. And you can see also 
uh, the, the duct system connected to that unit. You can see the return of the supply ducts. So if you come back uh, here, you'll see uh, the, name tag, the name tag and uh, here we'll take a picture and we'll write down again all the information that we need.